So you have an Angular application that your users love. But what if I told you you can make your Angular app even better by making it a progressive web app or PWA. As a PWA with the same code base, it can become an installable desktop app and mobile app with native functionality. This allows your website to be even slimmer and faster while giving it the look and feel of a mobile app or desktop app. That even offline, it still shows data and doesn't show just a dead UI. So I'm going to show you guys how you can add the service worker needed so your Angular app can become a PWA. So let me explain to you guys what PWAs are, and then let's dive into the code. And if you find this video helpful, please drop a like on this video and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the other amazing coding content on this channel. Now let's go. So quickly, let's touch on what is a progressive web app? Well, it's an app built from web technologies, but made to feel like an actual native app. The goal is to be able to provide a mobile app like experience for websites. So it's kind of taking your website and taking it to the next level where it now feels like a built in app, not just like a random website that you just, you know, hit the URL and are going to. It also should be able to be installed on your desktop or phone without an app store and it acts just like any other app would. You wouldn't even know it's a website and it does still have obviously access to all the APIs and whatever provides it, you know, its data. This would allow a company to not need to create an extra native app, only the PWA, which would mean what? One code base, since that can also directly be installed, right? On, on mobile, whichever you need and then set up to work just like a mobile app would. And it really would make the two almost indistinguishable. PWAs can also run offline and are smooth and lightweight. They can access the OS, but they don't get as deep as mobile apps. But for most cases, it's good enough. And these are all the benefits that your Angular app would get if you turn it into a PWA. But how do you do it? Well, let's get into the code now. Okay guys, so now that we're at the project, I've gone ahead and just created a brand new Angular application. As you guys can see, Angular 16 right here. So you guys can see what we have. I'm just gonna ng serve this right now. So I can just show you that we just have a blank application. So as you guys can see here, we just have a basic Angular template right here. It works as, you know, a regular application. If I go here and inspect and I do this and turn off the network to offline, you know, if we have a PWA, it would still serve me something here, but since it's not, and it's just a regular Angular application, and we go offline, now if I refresh, it's gonna say no internet, and then you just have the little dinosaur game. But we can fix that if we actually create this and turn it into a PWA. So let's go ahead and start adding in everything that we need to turn this basic application into a progressive web app. Once you've killed your application, you're gonna run this command. It's gonna be ng add angular backslash PWA. Once you run this command, it's going to add in a whole lot of things to your application. And I'm going to show you guys what changes are happening to your application and why. So now go ahead and press enter and let's see what happens. So it's finished executing. And as you can see right here, it's created this ngsw config, a web manifest, added in a bunch of icons and made updates to a bunch of files. So this is what should happen. But there was one case where I was seeing errors. And let me show you guys exactly what type of error you might run into. So this was the issue I was running into. I would run ng add angular PWA. And then it would say like, hey, we found this package. Let's install it. And I would say yes. But then it would just immediately say packages successfully installed. There wasn't the whole thing like you saw right here where it added in all this stuff. It would just instantly be like done. And then nothing actually changed. Well, I ended up figuring out that there was a conflict between my angular CLI in my Angular PWA update. So what I had to go do is I then had to do npm install Angular CLI at latest, and I'll pop that on the screen so you guys see exactly the command. And once I updated my Angular CLI to the latest version and then ran Angular PWA and those two were all synced up, then I was able to correctly, you know, get this result that we have here. But I just wanted to bring up that error. So if you guys run into it, you guys maybe have, you know, one first, clue to how to fix it. And it was installing and updating your Angular CLI. So there's a few changes to your application. And the one thing I want to point out is that your service worker, 
this is the worker, the extra thread that works alongside your app, your Angular application. This is the service worker. This is what keeps your application quote unquote alive. It's what stores and caches some data so that your application never goes to that offline just dead screen. So that you always have something. So your service worker is what actually does that. And that's what essentially we just added in by adding in Angular PWA is it adds this service worker to work alongside your Angular application. And that's what basically basically creates the functionality of a PWA. So now let's dive into the files that were actually created new that you guys haven't seen. So the first one's going to be the manifest.web manifest. This is basically setting all the settings for your PWA. So as you can see here, this is going to be like the name of it, the short name, the theme color. This is basically all the different things that are taken into account when you are going to then install your application, the different icons that it has for different sizes are all set right here. You know, your display, like I said, the colors and the names. So this is where you would change all those settings for your PWA. And other than that, we're going to have our ngswconfig.json. So this is where your service worker gets basically all its different commands and it knows kind of how to handle its things. So let me walk you guys kind of through what's in here. And then we will eventually make some edits and add in a few extra things uh, to just make sure that our service worker is ready to go and cache everything that we need. So first off, we're going to have the index here. This is basically the index page for navigation is very straightforward. Next, we're going to have our asset group, which this is going to point to the resources to be loaded from the page origin or from somewhere else. And we are going to want this cached. So what are we going to want cache? We're going to want the icon, the index page, our main page, our manifest, our CSS, JavaScript, right? We want all that stuff cached. And then looking down a little bit more, you're going to have this install mode. So there's actually two different ways. Uh, you can do installs. So prefetch, like it says here, if you can look at all this, but basically uh, it tells the service worker to fetch every single listed resource while it's caching the current app. And if you were to do lazy here, it's not going to cache anything, only the things the service worker actually receives requests for. So if you had like a very big application, maybe you wouldn't want to cache the other 30 possible pages that no one's used or, you know, is it needed for maybe a static offline application? And you only want to load a handful of pages or the most used pages or assets or stuff of that nature. You might want to use lazy, right? So, to, you know, to not just have a huge bloated cache and only have a handful of things. And now scrolling down here again, this is the update mode. So this is basically how frequently do we update our cache? And if you do prefetch, it's again, basically going to update as many times as it needs to do automatically and lazy it's only going to be once it gets a new request for a resource that's already cached it's then going to update it and as we're going to see later you can also cache data requests using data groups which is another one that's going to go i believe right after here yes you can do data groups and we'll do that in a little bit i'm just going to leave that right now but data groups this is basically where you're going to have your api endpoints so this is where you're basically going to tell it to cache certain data coming back from your APIs. So that's going to be very useful to have because that data is obviously going to be there for you if your application happens to go offline. So the first thing that I wanted to do was just run an ng build. Why? Because I just wanted to have my disk folder and my project folder here. And having this right here is very key because we're going to need to access this when we actually want to run and see our PWA locally. The next thing that you need to do, and I need to stress this so you guys understand, is now that we've added in the service worker and made this a PWA by adding in those packages, we now cannot run ng-serve. ng-serve, I repeat, does not work. So how would you even you know, locally run this? How would you know what your application is even doing? Well, you have to do this command right here. You have to npm install. Uh, globally this HTTP server. This will allow us to run a local HTTP server so we can actually see our application working here. And obviously when you then deploy your application to whatever cloud service or wherever you host it, uh, it'll work the same because it'll be somewhere else, right? But for working with it locally, you need to use this HTTP server and I'll show you guys uh, the command to actually get it going in a second. But basically your ng builds are gonna be in your source or wherever, but to actually run your server, you're going to have to go inside of this project folder, but we'll get there when we get there. But now let's go ahead and actually start adding different things uh, to our application, which is going to be Pokemon themed. And we're going to be pulling different Pokemon information from a API. So now that we've kind of touched on the service worker, uh, these different files that were added in here and all of that, I just want to again show that we have all our different icons are going to be in here. Those icons that you guys saw in those files uh, in the web manifest, they're all in your assets. 
And then there was a few changes in your index. Right here, you're basically just registering that manifest that you have for the service worker. And then what other changes did we have? I believe our packages.json that we just added in our packages. And then our app.module got changes as well. And this is basically for registering the service worker module and everything that we need in there. But now let's actually go and add in the code for our project. So first I'm going to go in my app.component and I'm going to just remove all the default stuff because we do not need that. Let me get rid of all of this and let me add in all my fun Pokemon code. So what we're going to have is we're basically going to be showing uh, some information for my favorite Pokemon, which is Metagross. Uh, I'll show a little picture right there. And then we're going to have a little button uh, that's basically going to go grab the shiny Badoof form. Uh, once you do a button click, it's going to go get its image. And up here, we're just going to be showing a bunch of information for Metagross. So now we're going to go to our app component and let's add in the code that's going to go in there. Let's add in our methods. So I'm going to leave the title as is, and then we're going to have a Pokemon object, a Bidoof object, and a Show Bidoof Boolean. We're going to create this service in a second as well, so don't worry about that one, guys. Then we're going to do this ng on init, and we're going to call this get Pokemon data on page load. We're going to call that get Pokemon data right here. It's basically just going to call out get Pokemon data from a specific URL. And then we're just basically going to assign that Metagross object into this Pokemon object. Very easy. And then we're going to have the shiny Bidoof click event which is basically, again, just gonna call out to a certain endpoint, get the Bidoof object, and then say show. So we'll be handling all that. So the Metagross Pokemon object will be here, and the Shiny Bidoof will be right here. So now what we're gonna need, we need our service. So let's go ahead and create our service. Now that we have our service, let's move our code into here. Very straightforward, the get Pokemon data and the Shiny Bidoof method. And then we have our HTTP client right here. So let's import all the packages that we're gonna need here as well. Cool, we're good, so now all this stuff is good. This should also be good once I import this into here. Okay, and once we've added in all this code, we just have to do a few more things. We're gonna need to go to our app.module and we're gonna need to import our HTTP client. Now we have this, let's import it now, cool. So now we have this, we're done with the app.module. And the last thing that I wanna do after the app.module is I wanna go in to the config and now I want to go and actually fill in these data groups. This data groups is going to be the data that we want cached from API requests. So I want to set that up and how we're going to do that. And I only want to do it for Metagross. I don't want to do it for the Bidoof API endpoint. So we're only going to do it for this one. We're not going to do it for this one because I do want to test uh, when things go offline. So we're going to go in here and we're going to go in data groups. And you're going to put this code in here. Basically, we're just gonna call it Pokemon API. We're gonna put the URL, which is this pokeapi.co API, and then we're gonna get the certain Pokemon. And then you have all these different configurations right here. So in your cache configuration, there's two different strategies you can use. You have the performance strategy, and then you also have the freshness strategy. You have the maximum age, which is basically how long you leave something cached. The max size is how many cached responses you'll have. And then you'll have the timeout, which is how long you'll wait for the network before you just time it out and you use the cache. So we're setting all that in here. And that's how you would cache, uh, you know, your API data responses. So what you're going to want to do is first, before you actually run the HTTP server, is you're going to want to do a fresh NG build just because we made code changes. And once this is done, we're now actually going to want to run the HTTP server. So you're going to want to go to your dist, right click on your Angular PWAYT. Open that in your terminal, and then you're going to want to run this command, HTTP server dash O. It's going to instantly open up your application. So find it. Mine opened up over here on this tab. So as you can see here, we have all our random Pokemon data right here. We have Metagross, my favorite Pokemon right here, all of its sprites and all of its information, abilities, moves, blah, 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 blah. And down here, we have that click for shiny Bidoof button, but I'm not going to do that one right now. Why? Because I want us to cache only this so far. So if we go back here, we'll see where all the magic's happening. If you click application, you'll see the service workers. And right here, you'll see our service worker. This is that separate thread that is actively caching everything. So obviously right now we are connected to the internet. We are able to you know, go and make requests for Pokemon objects right here. And we're getting this stuff from our API. But wait, what if we go into our network and go offline? So now, in our old Angular application, we would technically have that dead, no connection, uh, you know, nothing in our application, right? But if we refresh this, 
we're now pulling actually, not from the API, because as you see, we're offline. We're pulling only from the service worker. And how can I prove that we're not pulling from, you know, the internet, right? It's because I didn't use that Badoof, so it should not have it cached. So if we click that, it's not able to get out there, but we're still able to have everything that we cached in here. So you see guys, we're able to still get all our information and it looks like a real working website, even though we're not connected to the internet. So now let's move on to the next step. So now again, if I set it back, we refresh this, we should all be good. And now I should be able to go and get the actual shiny Badoof, which is shown here because now we're connected to the internet. And you guys are probably like, oh, that's cool. But I thought you promised us that, you know, our application would stay up and we'd use the cache and blah, 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 blah. But I thought you said that this was installable as like a desktop app or a mobile app. Well, yes, I did. I did promise you guys that. You want to know how to do that? Well, since we do have a PWA and you look at this, you can see this right here, this little uh, little arrow down with a, on a little computer. It says install our Angular PWA YT. You click that, it's gonna ask you, are you sure you wanna install this app? Click install, that window will go away now and we're gonna close it. And then I'm just gonna, it installed it on my uh, on my other monitor that I have here, but I'm actually gonna move the icon over here so you guys can see it. So right here, you should be able to see this Angular PWA YT is right here. And the window that it actually creates is this one. I'm gonna close it and I'm gonna reopen it again. So right here. Boom. So now, as you guys can see from what I was talking about earlier, when it has like native, it looks like an app functionality. This is still our same website. This is the exact same website that we were just using in the browser, but now it's installed as like an application. So it looks like it's not connected to the internet. It doesn't look like a browser. It looks all slick. It looks all clean. Uh, you can go in there and you can uninstall it right here, but look at it guys. And if, again, if we weren't connected to the internet for some reason, it would still bring up our cache data. But look just how cool and how clean that looks. It doesn't look like we're in the browser. We have literally installed our Angular app, you know, as a desktop app here. And the same would work if you do this on mobile and if you pull it up, you'd be able to install it there as its own app. And this is where those icons that we looked at in the web manifests are. But this is how cool uh, an Angular app can look when you make it into a PWA. And this excited me whenever I got it done for the first time, and I hope it excites you guys as a really cool topic. And now that you're able to create your Angular app as a PWA, well, maybe you wanna hook it up to a .NET API backend. And if you wanna know how to do that, then click on this video right here.